The first Adobe Illustrator secret is based around this little tool right here, the Smooth tool. So I have the same vector shape duplicated over to the right. And normally people will grab this Smooth tool and just start drawing along their path or their shape. Often the results won't work out too well or as they expect. Now here, just for demonstrational purposes, let's say I want to get this shape to be more circular and more smooth. The quick and the simple secret is this. Instead of drawing with the smooth tool, simply just click on your path or your anchor points. Your path should smoothen out in a more uniform and a more practical way. I personally like to use both methods in combination together, and ideally, we want to get as few anchor points as possible, which this method does help with. Every situation is different though of course, it's just nice to know the smooth tool functions differently if you click your paths as opposed to drawing on them. And of course also we can come over to the tool presets, double clicking right here. The second secret is found here by clicking the three dots at the very foot of the toolbar menu. And then we navigate up to here to open a different menu and create a new toolbar. Now you might be asking yourself why, why are we doing this? Well, sometimes we need quick access to tools that don't necessarily have keyboard shortcuts. A prime example is the smooth tool that we just used a minute ago. The smooth tool is one of those shy tools. It's hiding always behind the shaper tool. We normally have to hold down a click here, highlight the smooth tool, then select our design again, and then actually select the smooth tool. Annoying, right? Instead, just make a new toolbar and put in the tools that you want to use for your current project or your process. And bingo, away you go. And as we work, we can apply tools to the toolbar simply by using their keyboard shortcuts if they have shortcuts to them. And in my experience, having a new toolbar for each project does save a lot of time. Creating a perfectly smooth and functional curves in Illustrator doesn't always require the pen tool or the smooth tool. This next one is really cool and thanks to Dansky on YouTube for this one. I saw it and I simply had to share it with you guys. So if we navigate to the puppet tool, we can apply some effects to stroke paths as you see here. So click and remove the nodes if you want and then put a node at each end of the path and anywhere else in between. And we're soon going to apply some more nodes, but we can actually maneuver our path around very easily in Illustrator and Illustrator never looks so smooth. I mean, look at this, but depending on your design and what you want to do, we can add more nodes and rotate each node as we see fit. And here's the thing. The stroke is still 100% editable. So we can do things like adjust the stroke weights and even something such as coming into the intertwine menu and applying effects such as this right here. And then what about using the width tool, which is shift W on your keyboard. And let's make one of the ends of the path thicker than the other end. And to finish things off here, let's round off the cap at the end of the stroke in the stroke menu. Yeah, I'm not sure what this design actually is. Maybe it can be like one of those psychological ink cards. So yeah, how about telling us what you see in this image in the comment section below. Now I also use the puppet warp tool to save myself a bunch of time in Illustrator, but crucially only in certain situations. So here we have a logo, but this logo is an organic logo by nature. And by that, I don't mean it shops at Whole Foods. I mean, the logo itself is very curvy and free flowing. That's opposed to straight line and straight edge logos. When we have designs like this, and perhaps we want to see how it might look in different positions or different kind of layouts, grab the puppet tool and begin to add some notes. Simply play around with your design and see what changes you can make in double quick time. And a quick tip here is that you can press command or control at any time to view your logo without the puppet warp UI. And as I've done here, it's actually wise to make a duplication so you can keep the original design as well original. It also acts as a reference point so you can see how the design has changed over time in your process. And crucially, you can see if the changes are desirable or not. Now, this is a great way to save time because we don't have to move the anchor points around or even worse than that, make an entirely new design from scratch. This next tip goes beyond conventional tool preset features. Now, often designers will come into the warp effects panel here and distort or alter the design or the typography but this is actually quite limited. There are several ways to apply what I'm about to show you, 
And this is the first way. Now on this circle, I'm using the knife tool to cut into it two times to make three different segments. And once I've done that, I just want to nudge things apart so we have slightly more obvious different segments. This effect works when the shapes are on top of the objects. So here my text layer is lower in the stack. Select the shape and your object, mind the topography, and then come up to Object, Envelope and Distort, and then use Make with Top Object. In this instance, we have some groovy typography, but of course, there are many ways to apply this effect. The important thing is that this isn't that possible with the generic warp presets. Also, things are quicker with this method, which I'm now going to demonstrate. So here we have a rectangle, and then we have my text. Let's apply the quick process that we did before, and the text will fill up the shape segment as you can see here. And then let's do the same again, but with the text a shade of grey, and quickly we do have a neat 3D-esque design. Now it might take some trial and error with how the outcomes end up looking. As example, take a look at what happens here. Still looks pretty cool though, and I think that the fact my design is made up of a serif font makes it work, so to speak. Anyway, here's a really neat way to generate colour schemes that you want to use on your designs. Bring an image into Illustrator and then use the Create Object Mosaic function found right here. Use as many tiles as you want, but for me, 3 for 3 does seem to work well. So we need to ungroup this selection and then we're going to create some shapes that are going to act as a colour scheme. It's then a case of using the eyedropper tool to generate the colour scheme, and from there you can manually apply the scheme to your design. But we can take things further and do something that many designers, as well as myself, do actually do. In the swatches panel, click the folder icon to make a new colour group while your colour scheme is selected. Name it whatever you want or something relevant to your project, and then we can head into the recolour artwork option. This will apply the colour scheme to your design in a click of a finger. But if you want some more quick, fast and useful tips in Adobe Illustrator, just click that video on the screen. But until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.